Greetings. We, are the Guardian. Welcome to Night Vision. I was chatting with an atheist the other day, and he accused me of using the dreaded God of the Gaps argument. The God of the Gaps argument, is actually just a silly little atheistic strategy, that is easily refuted, but is often used by atheists if the topic turns to science. The accusation is that believers insert God, into any gaps left open, where science hasn't provided a viable answer for a particular scientific mystery or dilemma. The tactic is so vacuous, to the point of being equally offensive and humorous. It's like the home invader, yelling stop thief, when the cops show up. God of the gaps? God, is the gap. He created every molecule, atom, and quark. He is energy and dark energy, and everything in between and beyond. He is matter and dark matter, and everything in between and beyond. He is the creator of time, space, and matter, yet he lives outside of time, space, and matter. He is the alpha and omega, the beginning, and the end. He is the creator of all things past, present, and future. He is the potter, we are but the clay. He is the universe, and we are but a grain of sand. He alone, is God. But the so-called gaps in science, are not gaps, they are immeasurable chasms. Science cannot verify their atheistic hypothesis about the origin of the universe. You call that a gap? Science cannot verify their atheistic hypothesis about the origin of life on Earth. You call that a gap? Science cannot verify their atheistic hypothesis about the origin of humanity. You call that a gap? They say, so what, so we can't prove our theories, but neither can you. That's our point. You can neither prove your beliefs, via evidence, nor disprove our beliefs, via evidence. But, there is a huge difference, because we can disprove, your so-called scientific premises. According to actual scientists, science is supposed to be observable, repeatable, and verifiable. So what are their top three cop-outs? Number 1. They claim that the origin of the Big Bang is not repeatable, because the process is too monumental to repeat. Number 2. They claim that Darwinian evolution is not observable, because the process takes too long to observe. Number 3. They claim that abiogenesis is not verifiable because, 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 they can't find a single shred of evidence to back up their atheistic fairy tale on the origin of life on Earth. The reason that we tend to harp on the abiogenesis issue, is because they literally have no evidence to back up their hypothesis. They don't even have plausible deniability. Atheism is a house of cards, built on the foundation of abiogenesis, if abiogenesis falls, so does their house of cards. The book of Genesis, and the book of creation, teach that God created life on earth, 3.5 billion years ago. He started with the simpler life forms, in the ocean. Can they disprove that? No, because that's exactly what the fossil record reflects. All science has is an unverified hypothesis, based on their atheistic worldview of naturalism. If abiogenesis were even remotely possible, why do we not see it happening right now? If it was possible then, why is it not possible now? The reality is, that it is not happening now, because it didn't happen then either. Abiogenesis is undeniably impossible. And since so-called science, cannot answer the simple question of, where did we come from, you may want to expand your horizons. Many years ago, I was a stone-cold atheist. Until I started to think for myself. I stepped out of the box that science had locked me into, and I simply opened my mind to consider all possibilities. I ruled them all out, one by one, based on the evidence. The only one left standing, was the God hypothesis. And here I stand, on that solid foundation of faith and evidence. Hebrews 11:6 6 says. Without faith it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must first believe that he exists, and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. So to attempt to find God, without being earnest, is a waste of time. 
but if you actually want to meet God, it starts with repentance, which is just a humble plea for forgiveness. Many try to put the cart before the horse, by saying, seeing is believing. But with God, believing is seeing. It's the heart and spirit first, then the mind follows. Give, and then you receive. You start here, God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Embrace that reality, and you will find truth, and your life will never be the same. Reject that reality, and your life will stay on the same trajectory. It's your call. God wants to save you, but you first must want to be saved. It's a huge decision, but it's the best decision anyone can ever make. Peace be unto you and your house. If someone refuses to look at the evidence, then that means it's not a lack of evidence, it's a lack of desire. No one is trying to force your eyes open. You must open them, of your own volition. There is none so blind, as he who refuses to see. Accept God's challenge. Look. At. The evidence.